Hey all. Um, so I wanted to make a video log today um, about an educated populace. You know, what's been going on in the country lately with the storming of the Capitol building and the riots this year and the protests and the kind of the chaos, the social chaos that we've seen this year um, or last year now uh, is fascinating to me because we haven't yet, I, at least I haven't heard anyone yet pointing out the cause of it. You know, it's a very American approach to this problem, which is that, oh, the cause for what just happened there must have happened in the last five minutes. And the solution has to be enacted in the next five minutes. That's why statements like when the looting starts, the shooting starts. That's why half of the population like it and another half say, my God, this man is a monster. It's because we're very short term thinking. And I think a lot of that has to do, I know a lot of that has to do with the fact that we're an ill-educated society in America. Um, and the solution and the causes for that are, last longer than our short-term memory. And we have to start thinking that way in order to solve them. You know, they didn't storm the Capitol building just because of what Trump said. Trump may have incited it, and it may be an awful thing, and you may not. You may be a supporter of Trump and say, I didn't hear him say that. That's not the way I took it. That argument is actually kind of irrelevant. What's relevant is the fact that we have all of those people protesting and absolutely believing that this election was a sham. How can we possibly get to the point where half of the country believes that the, the, the other half of the country are idiots? Not wrong that they are idiots and that they're, or that they're part of some evil conspiracy. The left wing thinks the right wing are part of an evil conspiracy and the right wing think the left wing are part of an evil conspiracy. Now, they've always been at odds, these two, right? They're, 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 they're opposed on a lot of things. There's a lot of issues they're going to disagree on. But we've got to a point in this country where it is so extreme that many times you will point to someone on the opposite side to you and say, that person cannot be reached. We cannot change that person's mind. Those people storming the Capitol, if you're a liberal, we can't educate them. We can't talk to them. They're gone. And the people storming the Capitol, looking at commentators saying how awful it was that they were in the Capitol, are saying, I can't talk to them. They're gone. It's too late for them. The way we get to this situation is by, of extremism, is by having an ill-educated populace. And the solution to that is not in the next five minutes and it didn't start five minutes ago. The solution for that, unfortunately, will take 20 or 30 years, at least, just like it took 30, 40 years for us to get to this point, for this destruction of the education of a populace. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we just have, we don't place any value on education. And the few values that we do place on education are wrong. <laughs> They're just the wrong value system. You know, I think a lot of what happens is that we believe that education is a valuable tool to get you a better job, for you to get ahead in this world, for you basically to promote your self-worth, for your achievements in this world, you must have an education. Now, that's obviously going to help. But that shouldn't be the fundamental reason to get an education. The fundamental reason to get an education is because it creates a more balanced person. It creates someone who is capable of critical thinking, regardless of which side of the fence they're on. And we have lost that. And the result of devaluing the importance of education is the fact that we get extremism. And we get parents who don't think, don't understand why their kids need an education. They just look at the kid getting an education as an important part of, well, I don't want you having a minimum wage job. But the truth is, the minimum wage job is not what matters here. What matters is that the person doing whatever job they have has the ability to understand certain concepts and thoughtfully deconstruct ideas to come up with an opinion which is more based on the society, which is better for society than these extremist views. And we can't do that. If you devalue the education, you end up with a poorly educated populace, with a vast amount of society not being able to understand simple concepts 
and deconstruct them or discuss them in a manner that is fruitful for the society they're in. You end up with extremism. You know, you also end up with a society that, frankly, uh, doesn't believe in bettering itself. You know, we end up with, with, with a group of people, with a society that is antisocial. They don't believe in bettering the society that has created them because they don't believe in the society that has created them. And they don't have the tools necessary to discuss the improvement of it. And that's so frustrating to be in that, you end up just angry and extreme and hating the other side. There's no reason to discuss it. They're wrong. They can't understand. Shoot them all. Kill them all. That's why people plant bombs. That's why people take guns to these rallies. Because there is no talking to the other side. You know, when, when a society, when the, propi the priority of education is the promotion of self, then there is no desire to improve our society as a whole. And that's the problem with it. That's the problem with the education. Our parents need to start seeing the education system as a tool for creating a good human being, not a rich person. It's a, it's a tool to create a good and balanced human being. It is essential, right? I find it fascinating that if you go to India, many countries are like this, but I'm going to pick India because it's a very extreme version. Of it. If you go to India and you go to a slum in Delhi and you find the poorest people you can find in there and you go speak to a mother or father and you say... What is the mo most important thing for your children? They will say education. They will always say education, a good school, a better education to me. Now, their point of view is they are in the absolute extremes of existence, right? So yes, they do want their son or daughter to earn more money than them and come out on top and to do better in this world. But there is also a fundamental understanding that that is what is required to create a balanced human being. And if you don't, if you end up with a population of idiots, then you end up with chaos, you know? The other thing you end up with is a group of leaders in the country who are frankly unethical and parasitic. And we will continue to have these politicians on both sides again. We will continue to have these politicians who use nefarious methods of injecting like this fearful rhetoric into the people. And the reason they do that is because it works. And these are not people that you can reach out to and say, where are your morals and where are your ethics? These people are snakes. And you know what? We grew the grass for them to hide in. It's our fault. Right? If we don't educate ourselves and we don't value education and every parent doesn't consider the education of their child to be a fundamental part of making a good society and a good person in that society and a happy person and a person who feels in control of their destiny and is not constantly going to be assailed by feelings of, of anger because they can't accept change. They can't, they can't initiate any change in their life because they have not been educated to think about critical thought, right? Not even, at, I'm not talking at a university level. Not everyone has to get degrees. They just need to be taught, hey, you need to go to school because it's important for you as a human being. This is what you need to do. You need to learn critical thought. You need to learn how to discuss things. You need to learn how to socialize. You need to learn how to respect certain members of authority. And if you don't, present an argument. These are all things that are taught in school. And if we don't see it, as an important part of our education, then we're not going to get any better. We're going to keep producing these parasitic politicians. You take people like Ted Cruz, and I know that I'm more liberal, right? I, I consider myself an independent, but I consider myself more liberal. And so I know that I'm going to be biased about Ted Cruz. But I, it's inconceivable to me that anyone on any side of the fence would look at Ted Cruz and say, we need to vote that person in. Because to me, it is abundantly clear that that person has no interest in the well-being of this country whatsoever you know i felt to some extent the same way about hillary clinton i didn't think she was as extreme as tom cruise but i didn't see her wanting a better country i just didn't i didn't i think she was a better choice than trump but that's irrelevant my point is this is not one-sided 
This can happen on both sides. I never liked Bill Clinton. I think he got away with a lot of bullshit. And the people who were liberals, the people who supported the Democrats, managed to find an excuse of why it's not bad. What he did wasn't wrong. What she thinks wasn't wrong. All of this background isn't wrong. They're absolutely fine. The same way that Trump supporters say the same about their leader and liberals say, what is wrong with you? Because we don't have an educated populace that can discuss these things. There are always going to be extremists. There are always going to be people who think their kids shouldn't be educated. But the reason this country became great, whether we still are or not, is debatable. We have a good quality of life still. But the reason this country became great is because immigrants came to this country who had those values in place and their first children were taught, you got to get an education. How many successful people in this country are direct children, one generation of immigrants? And how many fucking terrible people in this country are fourth or fifth generation Americans? As we lose those values, people come in from different countries with the values of, I just escaped from a hellhole country. My kid's got to get an education. My kid's going to do better than me. I'm going to work my ass off. I'm going to make it. I'm going to live the American dream. And their kids come up and say, yes, I'm doing that. These first children of immigrants tend to be wonderful people. That's an extreme exaggeration. But they tend to have, they tend to affect our society a lot. Some of them badly. But the point is, it's because they've instilled in them people who have come from different countries that believe in education, and we don't, and it terrifies me. Because if we started changing, if we started investing in schools now, because we have the infrastructure, we're just letting it fall apart. If we started investing in schools now, then it would still take 20 or 30 years before this country saw improvement. Before, maybe even longer than that, for maybe 40 years, 50 years, before the people that we are educating at that level are coming into power. And up until then, we will continue to get lawyers and politicians, and we won't be getting doctors, and we won't be getting coders, and, and we won't be getting that feeling of, or software engineers rather, that feeling of pride that comes from achieving those goals. We won't get that anymore. We will get people who just think they're never gonna make it, so they're gonna take a point of view, they're gonna think that society has fucked them over, and they're gonna become extremists. just terrifies me it terrifies me that we don't talk about education that we don't understand educating you know my 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 dear friends um Jarrett and Gillian have two kids who they send to uh, a Waldorf school now I don't have kids right but when I found out that one of those kids or both well both the kids the system couldn't read at eight years old I thought it was terrible I didn't tell them that because I love them and they're their kids. What right do I have? But inside, I was thinking, that's terrible, man. At eight, nine years, old, they couldn't read at all, as far as I remember. It was eight, maybe seven. But I was thinking, I could read. I was reading voraciously at that age. You should be reading. But the truth is, what they were doing is they were teaching the children critical thinking because they thought it was more important. The Waldorf schools, whether you, I mean... Whether you like them or not, what they're doing is they have approach to creating a good human being. Now, you can disagree about whether it's working or not, but that's what they feel they're doing. They're not just educating these kids so that they can get a good job. They're educating these kids so that they can become an important member of society. And you know what? These kids are, are that. They're fucking awesome, the kids at a Waldorf school. They discuss things rationally. They disagree with things rationally. They sort things out at seven, eight, nine years old that people in Congress can't sort out now. It's amazing. It's remarkable. And all of it comes down to a school that says, no, 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 we're not here to get you a better job. We're here to turn you into a good human being who can then go and get a better job. That's what our job is. And that's what we need to start viewing education as. All right. If I pissed you off, I want to know. Tell me. Because I can't help it. It's the way I feel. Maybe it's not that controversial. I'm sounding like an idiot. But, um, yeah, if you have kids, get them in education, not because it gets them a better job, but because society needs it. All right, Nuggets.